Greetings everyone and welcome back to our channel. In this video we'll take you through a comprehensive security assessment of a remote host using a range of tools. We'll be using Nmap to gain insight into the services running on the remote host. And next we'll utilize SMB client to list all the shares that are available and connect to a Microsoft SQL Server instance using Impacket MS SQL client. We'll also reconfigure the MS SQL Server to enable execution of shell commands. Additionally, we'll demonstrate how to leverage WinPeace to identify potential vulnerabilities which will grant us access to the host with Impacket PSXEC. Before we dive in, let's be clear that this video is strictly for educational purposes only and we do not encourage or endorse any illegal activities. With that said, let's dive into today's video. We started an Nmap scan during our intro using the dash SC and SV parameters to give us more details about the remote host. Now let's dive into the first question of this particular task. To crack the code, we refer to the comprehensive output of Nmap, revealing a plethora of ports open, which are SMB, MSSQL, and RPC. Port 1433, which is related to MSSQL, is the answer for our first question. As hinted by task 2, we will need to list the shares available on the server to identify the non-administrative one. After listing them via the SMB client, among the array of shares, we've discovered the gem named backups. As we have learned in previous challenges, admin shares contain a dollar symbol at the end of the share name. This means that backup is the answer for task 2. On to the next question, we have a clue that there is a password available on the share. So I will be connecting quickly to it and retrieving the file using the get command. Once we have the file in hand, we can use the cat command to view its contents. And as we can see here, this looks like a connection string which contains both the username and the password for a particular user. And with this information, we can answer the next question. MSSQL client is part of the Impacket collection which can be used to establish a connection to the Microsoft SQL Server. With this information at hand, let's go ahead and put it to the test. So I'm going to use the impacket msql on my Kali Linux. I will be specifying the username here, followed by the IP address of the host, and also I will add the parameter for Windows authentication. Once we hit enter, we are prompted to insert the password, which can be obtained from the file that we have just downloaded from the server. Once connected to the Microsoft SQL instance, we can just run the show advanced options so that we can see exactly what can be done here. We can now run the reconfigure command so that the changes will take effect and then set the SP configure so we see exactly what is enabled on the server. As we can see from the output, XPCMD shell is currently disabled so we can enable this with the SP configure and then we set the value to 1. Once the changes have been done, we need to reconfigure so the server reloads the config. With all the pieces of the puzzle in place, we can just now run XPCMD shell followed by the command we would like to execute. In this case, I'm going to run whoami and as we can see, we are getting back this particular user we have authenticated as. For the next part, we're going to try and establish a reverse shell connection to our machine. And I'm going to try and download the executable directly onto this particular machine. Unfortunately, it failed because there is no name resolution. So I'm just going to go ahead and set up a web server and provide it from my machine directly. And we will download it as shown here with my machine's IP address instead of the GitHub domain name. Once the file has been downloaded, we can go ahead and start up a netcat listener onto our Kali instance and then we can run also a PowerShell command followed by all the details that will establish a reverse shell connection. Unfortunately, I made a mistake here. It's in the desktop, not in the downloads folder. Once this has been done, we can hop back onto the other console and as we can see, we have a shell established and we are in the desktop folder. We can use the dir command to list the contents of this particular folder we are in and as we can see we have two files the one which we have just downloaded the netcat and another one which is user.txt so i'm just going to type the user.txt onto our screen and as we can see here we seem to have found a flag I will be jumping now back into the hack the box portal to answer a few more questions. Um, uh, as we can see the stored procedure for Microsoft SQL which can be used to spawn Windows shells, it's XPCMD shell. 
And for the next question, it is a great hint for us. It is going to be WinPs. Basically, WinPs is uh, a piece of software that we can use that will highlight low-hanging fruit to escalate our privileges. I will be downloading WinPs onto my Linux machine and then transferring it to the target host, the same as I have done with Netcat. So I'm just going to fast forward the video here. While skimming through the output of WinPs, as we can see here on screen, we have some history file of PowerShell. With the knowledge of this particular file, we can just go ahead and print it on our screen. And immediately, as we can see over here, there seems to be the administrator password in plain text right in front of us. Immediately with this newly discovered password, we can just go ahead and do a PSXX session, which will grant us a remote session to this particular host. With all these building blocks in place, as we can see here on screen, we managed to obtain a shell running a system the most powerful account on a Windows machine. I'm going to assume that the root flag is going to be on the administrator desktop here since we found the user's uh, flag on the desktop of the service account. And as we can see here, the flag is actually on the desktop. So I'm going to use this later on. Since we managed to obtain the flags, we're going to go ahead and go back to the hack the box portal to finalize our last few questions. The file that contained the administrator password is the console host history, which is used by PowerShell. The user flag is the actual text file that we found on the service account. So we're just going to copy and paste that in here like so. And finally, we can just grab the root password that we have just retrieved from the administrator's desktop and we can paste it in like so. And that brings us to the end of this challenge. I'd like to thank you for watching. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. And as always, stay curious, keep learning.